Buddhist tradition, there's a firm belief in the idea of reincarnation. And the idea that we come back to live life after life is something that I believe in personally too. But is there really any proof, other than a feeling inside that you've been here before, or that you maybe are an old soul? Well, after watching this episode of The Wi Files, I think you might just consider that there is a possibility that we could come back to live lives again and again. It's a story of three brothers, one who's a regressor, one who's been regressed, and one who's got the evidence to back up the stories, as you'll discover. Robert and Peter are with me now. Robert, if I can start with you, how do you first get interested in the idea of regression? Hypnosis in itself and the past life uh, that seems to follow deep regression um, has always interested me, as all other uh, paranormal um, UFOs and all that. You know, I've always been interested in that side of things. And hypnosis interested me, and uh, I decided to learn the process and. Um, knowing that there are many, many pitfalls that should be avoided. And once I felt that I was competent, and uh, we then look around for guinea pigs, subjects to hypnotize and regress. Peter um, volunteered to do a session one evening with us, and um, we set the session up. And sure enough, within a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, he had regressed at that time, supposedly, into this former life, what he's now transpired to be an actual character that did actually live in those times. So what's the basic principle of regression? How does it work? The basic principle of regression follows on from hypnosis in itself. Uh, hypnosis is an altered state where someone is taken from their conscious state into a state away from where they are and they go into this other twilight zone, if anything, not unconscious, of course, because they wouldn't be able to hear you, and technically, and not asleep. It's an altered state in between those. So do you think that all our previous lives are somehow stored in our brain or in our memories, or are they pulled from somewhere else? Um, I personally believe they are memories in the sense of all the things that we store, that we do daily, are stored in our memory banks and we can bring them out when we need to, if we can. Uh, and I believe we can go back even further than that. Uh, I believe we have had past lives and through the genetic or the soul or spirit, as spiritualists will tell you, entering into a newborn after the other one has passed over, or in some cases with the deja vu uh, syndrome, you, you, you feel like you as though you've been in places, you know, and you don't know why or how. And I think we all have these, but regression is a way of going through that door and getting into these memory banks. Peter, when you were first regressed and this first happened, what expectations did you have as to whether this would actually work or not? I had an idea that it would work now. I can't explain why, but something was telling me to go for it. And of course, once I was under hypnosis and I started coming out with all this information, um, it was strange really because I knew nothing about the Civil War before the hypnosis, no previous um, knowledge at all. It was a subject that I was never, had never been interested in. So when you were regressed and you suddenly discovered you were this other person, what was that actually like? What was the sensation of that? Uh, well, it, it's difficult to explain really. Uh, I can't really put it into words. Um, I was this character, and yet, at the same time, I thought, well, you know, I was this character, and why is it happening? So, who was this character? Who was this person? Well, I was John Raphael, and I lived in, in a farm in Nottinghamshire, working on the farm with my parents, actually. And then, of course, when the Civil War started, um, 
parliamentary troops came to the village and told me that I'd got to go and fight. And they said, if you don't come and fight, then we will string it up from the nearest tree. So I went along with them. And then one of the first battles that I was involved in was when we attacked a castle in Newbury in Berkshire. Now this was in 1643. So when you experienced all this, did you actually feel like you were actually there? Did you see pictures? How did it, how did it manifest itself? Oh, uh, yes, uh, absolutely. You know, you're describing these things and you're actually there. So do you have a sense that perhaps you've lived more than this one life in the past? Well, it has been suggested to me during the last four and a half years we've been doing the research that I may have been around in Roman times in the same places that I was involved in in the English Civil War. We're now going to attempt an experiment and Peter is going to be regressed back to one of those former lives by Robert. We're not actually allowed to show you the process of hypnotism on television, but we can show you what happens afterwards. So let's see if we can do this and let's see whether Peter does indeed go back to the Civil War. We've arrived there now. The darkness is disappearing. It's becoming lighter. You're looking around, you can see where you are now. You know this place, a pleasant place in a pleasant time. Can you tell me where you are? What can you see? We've stopped by the side of the road at the moment. There's 500 of us here. We've run our way to air. We're stopping at Jebra. Which is a few miles further on, I'll be told. What are you doing in Jebra? Why are you on this road? They've captured some royalist prisoners at Jebra. Who have captured these prisoners? Some of the other troops that were up there. There's going to be a hanging. What yeah. year is this? Can you remember what year it is? 1649. It's 1649. I have to ask you, can you tell me your name? I didn't ask you your name. I'm John. My name's John. What other names do you have, John? I'm a Raphael. Raphael, Raphael. Can you describe what you're wearing at the moment? Wearing? What clothes do you have? I have my uniform on. You'll be happy when this is all finished? Yes. Have they told you when it might finish? No. When they took me from the farm, they said it would only last about two or three months. Where was this farm? The farm where I lived. Mm. And that's near a village called Highland in Nottinghamshire. Relax and listen to my voice. We're going back now, John. We're leaving this place. We're going back. We're going into the darkness. I will be with you. We're going into the darkness. We're going back from the place where you began. We're leaving this place. We may return, but for now we're going back. Well, a fascinating experiment there. Um, Robert managed to succeed in getting Peter back to that former Afghan. Peter, how do you feel after that? Well, initially, when I, when I come out of uh, regression, I feel slightly light-headed. Hmm. And that passes pretty quickly, and then I'm, I feel full of energy. Right. Robert, um, why wasn't Peter talking in the dialect or the dialect, dialect, sorry, what was it, yeah, of the time, the language, language of the time? Of the time. Um, yes, the dialects and even foreign languages do come into regression sometimes in many cases, but you have to remember we're in an altered state, and although he's retaining part of his present day person, he's the present day person, and part of it is memory and part of it is actually being there, you do get a mix up sometimes of this. But we found that in lots of cases it isn't always that you should be talking in that particular language, though they do sometimes do this. Right. Uh, and, and also what has happened here, we are tending now, because we've done several sessions with Peter, it's as though his mind or his re remembering sessions are training him to speak in his modern day language. Although we're taking him back and he's becoming another person, his present day mind and thoughts and that are very forceful and can sometimes overshadow the previous life ones. You do get a mix. Peter, do you actually um, remember any of the stuff that you've just experienced? Yes, 
I know the questions are being asked and I'm answering them, oh yes. I can see what I'm describing as well at the same time. Now the third member of the team in this story is Carl, and while Robert and Peter have been doing the regressions, Carl's been checking up on some of the evidence, and he's certainly found some interesting things. Now we've got some things in front of us here, in fact there are actually literally boxes of things, boxes of coins and pieces, there's more here as well. Um, and these you've been led to by some of the regressions that this, Robert's had, yeah? This is correct. Um, when Peter talks on the hypnosis about the locations that he was camped on, or the battle, battles that he's been on, we then go and research the area, we research the information he's given on, on the hypnosis tapes, and this is some of the evidence that comes up, three English Civil War coins, one of which has CR stamped on it, which is Charles Regina, mm -hmm. Charles I of England. And he told you where these were? He told us that those, that there would be coins found close to a tree, Mm -hmm. where they used to sit playing cards um, and on one uh, field trip if you like we went out with a local metal detecting club and within a space of about 15 feet we found those three hammered coins. We then um, dis decided to go into a field that Peter said the officers were camped in and that's where we, we found this broken spur off an officer's boot. We then have a, a round musket ball made of lead um, that is an unfired one. The one next to it, the piece of scrap metal next to it, if you like, is actually a, a spent or fired musket ball. Out of all the stories and the objects that you've got that Peter's led you to, have there been any particular stories that have made you sit back and go, wow, this is, this is mind blowing? When he took us to Jedra, where he said there was going to be a hanging party, and he said that they were going to hang eight prisoners from the boughs of a tree. And he called the tree the hanging tree. But he said the most significant thing about this tree was that a fully grown man of about five foot seven could actually walk through the base of the tree. When we arrived at Jedburgh and we asked locally, is there such a thing called the hanging tree? They said, you mean the cap on tree. Now the cap on tree is at Jedburgh. It was used as a hanging tree in the 16th century, 17th century and early 18th century. It's known as the cap on tree because at the time when a prisoner was sentenced to death, the judge would put on a black cap, hence the phrase cap on. He'd put on the cap and pronounce sentence of death. Peter said he, he and other members of his uh, troop, if you like, hung eight bodies from this tree. We arrived there and you can actually, or you could, up to about 40 years ago, a man could walk through the base of this tree. It grows in such a way there's a hole at the base of the tree big enough for a man to walk through. The story of Robert, Peter and Carl. Three brothers and a story of a past life. It's an astounding one to my mind and I've heard others like it. People who've visited places and seen things that they couldn't possibly know about, who've spoken languages that they couldn't speak. How does it work? Could they really have lived those lives before? It's evidence, but is it proof?